When it comes to TF2 trading, there is so many different items in the game that sometimes it can be quite intimidating to really understand the value of the items you have. There are things ranging from weapons to cosmetics to taunts and different variety of those. They can be strange, they can be unusual. And one of the items in the game that has such a fluctuation or variety in price are war paints. Obviously people go to sites like backpack.tf in order to get an idea, but simply typing war paint in the search, you get an idea of how many different things there are and the variety of the different prices. You can take a look on money websites like Marketplace TF as well, and you can see how some of these war paints go for really, really high prices, but there's so many different things that change the price that it can be hard to actually understand the value of the item you have at all. You can have different unusual effects ranging from isotope to cool to hot to energy orb on skins that is, not on war paints. They can be strange, they can be minimal wear, factory new, well worn. But there is also a variety in the actual paints themselves. And that makes it even more complicated, but also very interesting for collectors. If I was to show you this war paint right now, some of you might say, okay, Macaw, I know that wall point, I've heard of it, and that's a sniper rifle and it's a cool effect. What if I told you that this wall paint alone sold for over two and a half thousand keys recently? You're probably thinking, why that in particular? Why, what makes this wall paint so special? It's, you know, it just looks the way it is. How's that different from any other Macaw wall paint? And it's extremely complicated, but simple once you understand the reasoning. We can take a look at the trade in case uh, people want to see the actual value of the items that were traded just for this wall paint that was then turned into a sniper rifle. Now, if we take a look at this, this is the McCaw pattern. And if you take a look at this little dot on the right side of the screen, that is the amount of white that you would normally get in the McCaw pattern. It's very, very rare to get a skin that has a lot of white in it. Hence why that sniper rifle, or the, what was originally a war paint, sold for so much. You can see the blues, the greens, the oranges, the bit of yellow, but this small amount of white, having that amount on a war paint, is desired because of how rare it is. Now, I've spoken to a bunch of collectors, traders, and people who have been involved in the war paint buying and selling business, if you want to call it that. And I've been told there's probably only around three unusual McCaw war paints in the game that have any significant amount of white on them. So a war paint like the one we just saw, having that amount of white is, uh, is pretty rare indeed, hence the price. We can move on to this, and it's another McCaw item. A war paint that was turned into a uh, black box and you can see it looks completely different to the one we saw earlier this one has the hot effects but the color is completely different this is mostly using the orange from the McCall war paint now I've been told again from my sources that there's only four what they called orange gem McCalls in unusual in existence that is a hundred percent orange using the McCall war paint and uh, some of them, a couple of them are in war paint form. This one in particular is on a black box and there's another one that is a sniper rifle. And this one is minimal wear. And some of the war paints, one's minimal wear, one's factory, uh, sorry, field tested. So again, you can get different qualities, but the color from this war paint can be so different. Now this one, this item in particular, this uh, black box with the orange gem kind of, paint from the McCaw has had offers of over a thousand keys that have been turned down by the owner and that just again goes to show how rare this can be. Moving on to another one here we got another McCaw and again it looks very very different to the one we've just seen. This one is mostly blue. Now this is a strange minimal wear and what's called blue gem so orange gem with the orange this is blue because it uses uh it uses the blue form now this is still in a war paint form this is just on a um, on a rocket launcher to showcase it for us um but some people i've been told again let's not uh let's not get too precise but some people saying this is potentially one of the rarest war paints in the game 
Now you have to obviously get McCaw, you have to get the complete blue. And obviously this is minimal wear, which is a very, very good one, the second highest behind factory new. It's also strange um, and to get the extremely rare pattern of completely 100% blue is pretty, pretty mad when you couple it with the fact that it is the cool, unusual effect. Now, uh, I've been told that people who would even consider selling this wouldn't do it for less than two golden pans. Again, kind of showing you how rare some of these items really are. On to another one here, we have again a McCoy, and again, it looks so different. This one's got a combination of all the different colors going on. We've got the green, we've got the yellow, we've got the blue, we've got some orange. It's what's called the rainbow McCaw um, pattern from the war paint, where you get at least four of the colors on the weapon. Now this here is a, a the rarest white McCaw that exists. It's a strange minimal wear rocket launcher, again from the same McCaw war paint, and this one has over 75% of the weapon covered in white. There is not very many weapons in the game that have, um, or war paints I should say, that have that quantity of white on them from the McCaw war paint. Remember, if you just cast your mind back to the war paint that we looked at and that tiny little square of white um, to get this amount of white from that war paint is absolutely crazy. And people say, you know, again, that this is worth a lot just because of that small amount. We also have different war paints that can have varieties in the amount that is being covered. Now this one here is the Tiger Buffed War Paint. And you can take a look at the two versions here and there is a slight difference in the amount of the different um, patterns there are. So we've got some white, we've got the Tiger kind of print there on the black, then a bit of a, a gray and some gold. And obviously the, the weapons that you can get from this is can be can be different just like we've seen with the McCaw war paint on this one is a Shah Han Shah I think I pronounced that right you can never say it correctly but it is completely full black on the blade and this recently sold for 70 keys pure it's not even strange but it's factory new and it has that all black now there is also different versions this is called the tiger ones um, and out of about 600 factory new tiger buffed uh, war paints, there was apparently only two of them that have the full black kind of skin like you've seen here. So none of the, the gray or the white, just purely the black tiger print on them there. This is an example of another one here, which shows the entire rocket launcher having the, the print, the tiger print there. Um, this is a full black one, as is the next one here, which is on the black box. And you can see, obviously, the different parts of the weapon have the different paint, but the actual complete like barrel or tube of the weapon is completely black in that pattern from the thing. Now, to give you an example, you, I've shown you this. To give you into an example, um, I'll show you the war paint. That little black strip there is essentially like the roll for you getting black on your weapon with this skin. That's why it's so rare. That's why it's so wanted, so desired, because the chances of getting that amount of black on a, on a tiger buff to war paint is that low. Um, so it's, it's a crazy roll that you can get. Um, we could take a look at, this is another example of something different that is highly desired. Um, this is a blue unicorn sniper rifle. And if you could take a look at the eyes, they have X's on them. And you're probably thinking, what what does that mean? Who really who really cares about that? Um, there are people who care about it, and it can be worth quite a lot of money. This sold for over sixteen hundred in items about a year ago, simply because it had the crosses, the X's for the eyes on the snipe on the war paint for the sniper rifle here. Um, that kind of shows you how such a tiny little variation in a war paint can have absolutely massive ramifications to the value of the item. Another example are the high roller skins. Now these are shown on some rocket launcher here, rocket, uh, rocket launchers, and the high roller um, war paint 
has a chance of having pink chips. Now you can see here, if you look carefully, there's some kind of yellow chips and there's a pink chip there. Getting one pink chip is extremely rare. Getting two on the same one is incredibly rare. And there's only about three or four in existence that have the high roller wall paint with double pink chip on it, which is absolutely mad. Now, it gives you kind of an idea, and I could go on and on and on talking about all the different wall paints and the slight variations that can completely change the price. But when it comes to wall paints, if you're unboxing or if you're trading, make sure you know what you're talking about. Because a lot of people think, is it strange? Does it have an unusual effect? What wear is it? Is it factory new? Is it well worn? But in terms of the tiny little variations, there are massive collectors out there who will look for the tiniest things, the tiniest changes that make these skins extremely rare within their own right. And people will be desperate to get their hands on them. And the amount of keys that are going, thousands of keys, thousands in unusuals being traded for one particular skin because of its slight rarity compared to the rest is absolutely mad. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into the war paint kind of collector's scene. If you'd like to hear more, there's plenty more where that came from. If you kind of like this video of a little delve into the different collector communities, let me know in the comments if you want to see more like that. Thank you so much for watching guys. Look after yourselves and I'll see you next time.